At last, I'm happy to say my SVO8 voltage conversion is finished, and I'm I'm pretty happy with the results. Uh, certainly, uh, the printing is no worse than it was before I began the conversion. Um, the printing I've done so far has all been with PLA. Uh, I've got some strange colour matches here because I've not got a lot of PLA filament. Um, and the PLA profiles definitely need tuning. But overall, it's printing quite nicely and the head swapping is flawless. I'm going to split this video into a couple of sections. Uh, the first is uh, just going through some of the other changes I've made since my last video. Uh, and then perhaps a bit that people may want to skip is me just having a whinge about all the problems I've had that's made it take so long to do this conversion. There's a link in the description to my GitHub page, which contains all the STLs I've created for implementing this build, along with some details on changes I had to make. I've pointed out before that the conversion requires me to move the bed forward a little bit to allow for the changes to the hot end mounting with the addition of the sec ball at the rear of the bed this has actually required me to move it probably another five millimeters further forward uh, just needed a reprint of the shims that were raising the bed and a replacement of those the problem wasn't so much the sex ball itself but it was actually the movement required by the head to find the sex ball when it's calibrating the heads the sex ball is a probe at the rear of the bed which allows you to position the nozzles correctly it does this by moving the head slowly towards the center of the ball to work out the exact top position of the ball from there it can give you an exact coordinate of each nozzle on each head and the offsets required to be set to get them printing exactly in place. Whilst it did take me some time to work out how to calibrate using the ball, I definitely say it's worth having. Uh, it's a cheap addition and it does make calibration very easily. Once I got the Z height of nozzle zero correct, I could just get the, the offsets from the sex ball for the other heads and they all then printed with correct Z height and identical X and Y coordinates to the other heads. As previously pointed out, one of the cooling fans on the SVO8 standard head has been moved to the side to aid in the mounting and unmounting of the head. It's obviously uh, optional whether you keep this fan, because I have seen several designs where the fan is just removed altogether. If more than four heads are required, then at least one of the heads will require the fan removing. You should be able to easily fit six heads if you remove the fans from all the heads. During testing, I did find I had a reasonable amount of stringing happening between head swaps. And for that reason, I've added a wiper onto the gantry. Would I recommend this conversion? Absolutely yes. If your budget is low and you have plenty of time to tinker. And also, it certainly would help if you are fluent in clipper configuration. Much of my time has been spent modifying the clipper macros to work consistently on the SVO8. Again, I have a link in my GitHub to the repository for my configuration. And I suspect it would be a good starting point for somebody uh, if they're doing this conversion. Would I stick with the SVO8 heads if I was to do it again? Well, cost-wise, certainly, they are pretty cheap. And for me, they print fine. 
it really depends uh, on your budget uh, and your requirements. It did take me a lot of time to redesign the fascias for the heads to have the uh, magnet built in and the clips on the back. Now that that's completed, I'm very happy with it. But what, were I to get my time back, I would probably go for a simple design and either have uh, a snap-on clip, or better still, Soval's new heads actually come with uh, a small hole and bolt in the, the top face of the cover, which helps keep them in place very well. That would be an easy change to make to one of the, the current heads. The addition of the magnets could then be done by some sort of a clip or just super glue magnets to the front. It would certainly be a lot simpler. However, as I said, my designing has been done and so I'm very happy with it. And if I was to redo this, I would use my design again. Unfortunately, I did have a few failures during my setup. I had one headboard, the MCU on the head fail. I suspect that was definitely my fault with a, a wiring problem. The harness wires I used, I believe, were far too thick. Um, if I was to do it again, I would definitely change the wiring harness. I also wasted quite a bit of time designing clips to help with keeping the wiring harness together and then only to find the clips kept catching on each other and causing the heads to fall. Meanwhile, the falling heads were damaging their cells. I've had hot ends smash into the bed. I spent probably six days chasing down uh, a problem which seemed to be moving from head to head. In the end, I realised one of the falls must have broken one of the head sensors. And for some reason, once that had incorrectly triggered, the next sensor it looked at also failed. I would also advise you to ensure that you correctly ground the hot end, as without grounding, I found after about 15, 20 minutes of printing, the MCU on the hot end would fail to connect. Again, this took many days to realize what the problem was. One of the biggest problems I had was trying to keep the heads in line with each other. I found that mid print, some of the heads would suddenly start being out of alignment. Eventually I realized the problem was the position of the mount point had been set incorrectly for one of the heads. So as it attempted to mount the head, the stepper motor would actually skip as it tried to push the head too far to the front of the printer. From that point on, all the printing was about a quarter of a millimeter out. But unfortunately, each time the head reloaded, it would do the same positioning error and the problem would just get worse. I just wish I'd realized the problem earlier because it really was frustrating trying to work out what was happening. Anyway, the project's finished now and I'm very happy with the results. All that remains for me now is to try and find somewhere to put this printer and start on another project. If anyone wants to uh, try this conversion, I'm more than happy to help them if you just send me a message, perhaps a, a comment on the video, and I'm happy to direct message you and uh, try and help in any way I can.